Is this on? Oh, he's on her. Hello? Hello? Yeah? It's okay. Uh, where's that? Lisa. Okay, um, thank you everyone to stay for the last uh, sessions. And I also would like to thank the organizer because um, they told me, uh, 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 you know, originally my title as you, uh, was read out was about a TPC. Then the organizer told me that, well, you know, this is plenary session, you should be more general. So, <laughs> and I did send them a, 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 a updated uh, a title and abstract, so they didn't get in. So that's why you see a discrepancy. So it's a new instrumentation for equation of state study at present and future study. So it will be more, hopefully more general so you see more beautiful pictures. Um, so I'm sure that a lot of you are not really that interested in me talking except for an F rip, right? So, um, so I want to go back to here and point out one uh, reference. So this is a curve um, the upgrade of the NSCL uh, office building, okay? So this is a reference point. Here is the, um, uh, drawing of, uh, architectural drawing of FRIP, so that's the reference point here. Okay, so you can see the scale. This is existing uh, NSCL. For those who have not been to Michigan State University, please come by, there's a lot of change. And then these are under construction. This is already finished, and then I'll show you the progress in here. And this is the groundbreaking ceremony. Um, I'm sure none of these guys work on the actual uh, <laughs> of the FRIP is March 17, 2014. A year later, so you can see the underground was mostly fixed up, uh, 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 finished, and so they started uh, above ground on April 1st, uh, about three months ago. So then this is the utility work in the tunnel uh, um, in April, and then by um, May 2015, that's the Linac tunnel. Okay, so things are moving. And please look at this, three months ago, the above ground construction just like this. This is what I got from, ah, sorry. from the website uh, yesterday, last night, uh, yesterday afternoon. So you can see the three stick that you saw becomes this. Okay, things move in, Mich in uh, Michigan and also in U.S., especially con for construction. Um, okay, so now I go back to the science. Uh, why are we interested in um, studying equation of state? If you are not convinced after the talks yesterday by Sherry Yanello and others, I will never be able to talk to tell you in one sentence. All I can say is just, I summarize what they said. If you want to understand finite nuclear to astrophysics, you need the knowledge and the understanding of the equation of state, okay? And so that, uh, that's needed to prove the fundamental question of nature of nuclear matter, express our isospin asymmetric matter, and to recreate and study astro. As a physical environment, there's a very good, nice talk by Ani this morning about the uh, R process site, and we will uh, discuss that. That's also related to the equation of state. Okay, so uh, what do we know now? So a year ago, yeah, so the Texas A&M group uh, organized a very nice meeting, uh, the low energy uh, community meeting, to, to recommend to the U.S. Long Range Plan facility a U.S. long-range plan committee uh, about what's the importance of the uh, physics. So from the equation of state group, we recommend uh, these following things. What the reason that we, uh, I will go through this uh, quickly, is this that we just based on the current constraint on the symmetry energy. So a plot here is the symmetry energy versus the density, okay? So you can see here is the normal nuclear matter density. There is some uh, surprising non-zero symmetry energy, mainly pioneered by Nettowitz Group, and also uh, Chris, Hazel, uh, uh, Chris Hagel gave a very nice talk about this, and is related to the uh, supernova e core uh, explosion, uh, colla core collapse explosion. But anyway, so then you can see we have been working on a lot of the people in here that uh, starting from part of NN, uh, uh, the first NN meeting, that we, work, we want to understand the nature of the bulk matter. And so these are the uh, constraints that we have obtained, but it's around, uh, symmetry, uh, symmetry, uh, around normal nuclear matter density and below. So we have a constraint, but you look at the constraint and compare to the, date, to the um, calculation, you see that the constraint beyond uh, one, so this is Pavel's constraint, and then uh, there is actually no, no uh, uh, credible uh, constraint in here. So this become the 
the above uh, saturation density become the challenge and um, uh, an opportunity for us. Okay, so that's why in here that we say the, for the above uh, uh, saturation density, we would like to determine um, the symmetry energy and the momentum dependence of isovector Lorentzo. Because once you're above the um, saturation density, there are other uh, factors that are important in the in the in the uh, determining the equation of state. Okay, so even about 10 years ago, we realized that if we really want to understand the equation of state because it's span over a range of density, which means that you have to go to different laboratory to take advantage of uh, the uh, energy and the uh, facility there. So we have loosely formed a what we, what we call a symmetry energy project. Okay, so basically what we say is, is that we would like to coordinate among ourselves to do uh, experiments at different uh, facilities. So for example, uh, from here to maybe two, uh, 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 twice as a uh, normal nuclear matter density, uh, the futures and the current, we can do some work uh, right now. And then there is uh, the lower energy facility can give us a lower density. And then if above to, uh, twice the uh, nuclear matter density right now, a uh, normal nuclear matter density right now is we have to go to GSI or FAIR. Okay. So that was, uh, so for example, um, so I would like, so as the previous uh, speaker gave a tour of uh, European, um, I can't give a, a tour of the international. I will only just highlight those few uh, places where we have um, um, substantial um, work on uh, equation of state work, okay. So as, as you will know, the uh, reactions, um, of the physics are not actually for everybody. So they're not every lab has uh, one have uh, those type of physics. So the first experiment I just mentioned very quickly. This slide is provided by Paolo uh, Rosotto that he did an a ACES EOS collaboration at GSI at 400 mE per nucleon. And so these are the uh, different uh, detectors that was incorporated into the uh, into the uh, experiment. There's the Michael Ball. This is the uh, Washington, Washington University Michael Ball. And then there's a Kafka array, uh, Kafka, Kafka, a Kafka array, a, a array, and then there is uh, the Chimera and the uh, uh, LAN and the, uh, you know, uh, in order to make sure that you have neutron background, you understand it, there is also the, um, uh, the um, uh, blocker, the shadow bar. Okay. So what's the future? I don't know, say, before the future, I see a future, is this a, the result, as you see, the experiment was done in 2011. There are quite a bit of um, uh, anal uh, problem, but uh, Paolo was incredible in terms of getting the results. This is not the result from here yet. This is the result before this experiment. And we, he believed that he showed us in the Paolo se uh, parallel session in his talk that there should be a reduction of least a factor of two in the uncertainty. Okay, so there will be new result coming out. So what's the future? So basically, um, his proposal will be that um, will be a similar setup, but include new um, uh, uh, detectors uh, that will be built at uh, GSI. So for that, and also uh, more different uh, reactions. Okay, for that, I'd like to go to GSI. This is a slide provided by Yvonne uh, Lifos. And so basically, in order to study the, uh, so they have the R3B, okay. For R3B, there are uh, th uh, three she specifically mentioned there were three um, uh, detectors. There's a Plavar and the Califa. So this is like um, in the previous um, uh, uh, slide, I showed that as a backward uh, angle detector. So between these two, um, uh, the, uh, Yvonne expect that we should be able to get very good uh, uh, reaction plane determination. And then a new uh, Neuland detector, which we replace the LAN, will, can give you both neutrons and protons. And then and the other uh, thing that was in here, but it's not with radioactive beam, is the pine ratio. They have a setup in Hardus that can um, measure both the pine ratio and the k, k on ratio. And that will be part of the comprehensive uh, program to study asymmetry energy. Okay, so now when we talk about pions, so pion was known uh, or was uh, predicted to be, will play an important part in symmetry energy. Why? Because pine is light. And so it's, it would, and pine is produced, as you can see in here, 
produced in the delta resonances, so it will be produced in direct NP collision. So it's sensitive to symmetry energy because it's like it will come out in early time, and so that's the sensitivity of the symmetry energy it is. However, pion's uh, cross-section is low, and also easy lab, we have soft in collision medium. So this requires some work in, in the uh, theory. So I would see that, so for example, I already mentioned there is a pi minus five plus uh, uh, as a uh, observable. You can also do NP, as I have mentioned uh, uh, in the last slide, and then or T helium three, but you can see the, the effect is, uh, this is in log scale, so the effect is huge, you know, for the pions. So pion ratios are most sensitive, okay. And so, um, so there are already programs that are uh, the, the looking at these pion ratios, for example, in China, so in China, they, they, they go an old dipole, okay? They have a dipole, they put a dipole here, then they build some multi-wire, a proportional counter, back by the time of flight war. So using the dipole magnet, they set, for example, B equal 0.27 Tesla, they can detect pi plus this way. But then they only have one set of multi-wire proportional center a, a counter. So then, in order to do the pi minus, they just change the, uh, the, uh, the, B, the B, uh, B field, okay? So then you can see there's pi plus and pi minus. Okay, so this is a demonstration that they can detect the pions. And maybe with more work, they can get this pi, pi on ratio. Okay, so then there is also, uh, as usual, um, uh, they have a, pro, uh, pro, there's a proposal under consideration uh, by Ji Gang uh, Xiao. Uh, he proposed to uh, in double the uh, MWD8 DC, so you don't have to switch the field of the um, uh, dipole. But on, in addition, that dipole is also will be upgraded to a much bigger one. And then they want to do the tracking much better with a TTC. Okay, now that goes to the center of my talk, in case you haven't figured out why it takes me so long to go with TTC, okay? So, um, as usual, we want a new observable, that's the pion. So normally for experimentalists, we also want new detectors, okay? And so why do we need new detector? Because now we're in the era of radioactive beam. Radioactive beam have low luminosity. We need a detector with large coverage. And we need a detector with high resolution because unlike structure, well, in the reaction, we have a lot of particles that come out. So it will, it will, the high resolution will, uh, will, is needed to resolve many different species of produced particles. And especially, we are interested in pi plus pi minus. So we need to distinguish the charge, you know, whether you're plus and a negative. That's actually relatively easy. You just apply magnetic field, okay? But then if you uh, uh, put in a magnetic field, then you need to also track the particles in the uh, uh, magnetic field. And then the other thing is to be uh, acceptable to the funding agency, you want your detector to be versatile for a wide range of experimental uh, programs. And so we settled on, uh, about five, six years ago, uh, our collaborators settled on the time projection chamber. So this is time projection chamber 101. So what, what is the principle for that? So first we look at a chamber. So basically it's a gas chamber, and then your particle that comes in, uh, it, uh, uh, the particles will ionize because it's a charged particle, ionize the, the gas, and then the electrons is released and it will drift upwards. And then on top of it, we have a, 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 a wire plane somewhere in here, yeah. So this signal will be amplified by a wire plane because it goes through what we call an avalanche region. So then the avalanche signal from the electron will be induced onto a pad plane. This is like pixel, your pixels, okay? And so this is your X, Y thing. The time is, then if you also look at the drift part, uh, the drift part of the electron, that gives you your time projection, that's your Z direction. So this, basically this is, you can consider as a 3D camera, okay? Um, okay, so what type of uh, react, I mean, um, many of you do, uh, you use? There are two types, and there are many detectors depending on which one, for example, the star detector, LHC detector that most of you know, use the solenoid detect, uh, uh, magnetic field. And then the uh, EOS T2K and including the detector that we're using, use the dipole magnet. So what are the pros and cons of it? The solenoid, because it's center, so the beam particles, the trajectory can be centered into the magnet depending on the beam species. Okay, but then it's also ionic because you want better resolution and forward angle, you are going to tilt it. But anyway, that's the, uh, one of the uh, nice things about. However, because it's a, 
are cylindrical. So you can imagine the, uh, the uh, forward acceptance is very, uh, very uh, so small. Everything else go out and then will be uh, pretty much blocked by the uh, a solenoid, okay? And so it has limited uh, momentum resolution at the very forward angles. So to get the better uh, momentum resolution, then you're better off with a dipole magnet. The dipole, the dipole magnet not only um, uh, give you better resolution, it also allow a wider angle um, downstream acceptance. So you can put in um, extra uh, uh, other types of uh, detectors easily. And the, uh, then the, however, there's a problem. Instead of like the, here, the beam trajectory can be centered in, a, uh, in it can be center. In here, depending on beam species and the, and the um, uh, magnetic field, the beam can be bent to different uh, places. Okay, so you have to account for that. And also, the, the big problem is that it's not that easy to mask the beam ionization. So this will, I mean, the techniques to, uh, uh, it can be overcome, and it need money, so. Okay, so now the solenoid magnet, I just want to uh, use this as an example to also introduce another upcoming um, accelerator that's rare uh, in Korea, in Asia. So they, uh, there is a group there called the uh, uh, LAMS, the Large Acceptance Multipurpose Spectrometer, where they, are, uh, they propose to have a solenoid um, TP, uh, with a TPC in a solenoid magnet, and then they also, does this solenoid will have a very large bore because they want to put in scintillation counters in there, and then they have a dipole to uh, uh, um, focus the uh, power of beam particle residues in a focal plane detector plus the neutron detector, uh, neutron detector array. So here is the prototype, it's a half size prototype, about ready to uh, be finished. Okay, and so for the spirit, so on the other side, instead of this uh, solenoid, we have a, a dipole magnet. For a dipole magnet, we utilize the uh, samurai magnet at Ricken, and so we call our TPC the spirit TPC. This is the spirit collaborations, and it's a strong um, a Japanese and U.S. collaboration. The U.S. collaboration, the main two um, uh, institutes is MSU and also Texas and m and Alan um, McIntosh especially play a very a key role in the, in, in, in the designing of our detector. Okay, and then we have students, both from Korea and US and Chinese, and then a lot of uh, undergraduate and graduate students that have uh, hands on to this device. Okay, here is an exploded view, anatomy of the, of the spirit TPC, and the, the heart of it is a few cage, uh, and then um, the, the few cage, and then after, a, Above that is the wire plane. I will just show some picture quickly. And then the main thing is the top plate, which is very rigid and contains all the readout electronics. All these are delicate, and it has to be protected by a um, uh, uh, enclosure. We call this enclosure. And this is uh, Alan um, uh, and the Texas a and group really did a lot, and in including the manufacturing of this uh, 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 enclosure, and then also um, a lot of mechanical things that go with it, okay. So I'll just go quickly through um, because of time, and if you want details about um, uh, some of these uh, descriptions, you can ask me because a, a paper has been published in the NIM article. So the fuel cage, for example, was made with uh, G10 PCBs, and so they are not uh, rigid, but by, by putting in the top and bottom, we make it rigid, and then you can see our students are working on it. And then uh, the fuel cage is insulated from the top plate by a, another wing, which you don't see in here. More important, to make it light, we use a cathode. Uh, a, a, the, for the cathode, we use a luminized honeycomb. Okay. And then here is the top plate. The top plate, basically the pad plane is on the bottom of the top plate. And so that's the very important one. The, pop, the top um, the pad has 112 by 108 pads, so that's 12,000 pads. Each pad is a is about 1.2 centimeter by 0.8 centimeter. Okay, so that we make it with uh, four PCB glue together and make sure that they are flat. We adjust the pad plane anode so that now it's about 50 micron on the average. The wire plane, if for those who are interested, I will just skip it right now. The only thing I should mention is, is that in order to prevent, uh, we want to close off the amplification re region when it's not triggered, when the event that we want, we don't want. So then we don't damage the uh, wires in the meantime. Okay, so this is the wire plane mounting. I will skip, and the gating grid, 
So you can see by uh, the, we, uh, uh, a student of ours uh, uh, designed a gate and grid uh, so there is alternate voltage. And uh, this is a few, the, uh, few um, lines so that when it's uh, closed, when it's closed is by having alternate, uh, um, a few lines, the particles do not go through the gate and grid. And on the other hand, when it's open, you can see a few lines allow you to go through the gate and grid. Okay, so we finished the construction in May 2013, and this is the assembly uh, by putting in the, um, a few cage into this um, tax, uh, tax A and M uh, enclosure. And then, uh, because we don't have the, uh, correct, uh, the, uh, uh, the electronics at that time, so we use, uh, but we use simple, um, I always say that it's undergraduate uh, experiment uh, to detect a gamma ray, to make sure that our detector is really working. Then in February 2014, we um, ship it to Japan, okay? So uh, this is Bill Lynch for those who are interested. He was so worried about it, he flew, he flew to Japan before the, the cargo left uh, MSU so that he can uh, make sure that it's, it's got unloaded correctly. So um, then we, uh, the, uh, you know, the, the, uh, the package uh, containing the uh, TPC was lower seven story from the surface to the experimental area. And then now, last summer, then uh, we have a group of people, including Alan, that even though he, I think because of some travel rules, he has to leave three days before this picture was taken. So the, we have a group of um, students and um, postdocs uh, back. Uh, Rebecca Shang was, uh, the, you know, the, uh, uh, she's the main mastermind in the, in the project also, even though she's left our group now. So, um, so she, so, so the whole group um, designed a way to, you know, to lower the, uh, 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 the TPC into the uh, area near the samurais and then push it, basically pull and push into the samurais and finally they succeeded. Okay. It's, it's not that simple. I think the preparation is like half a year and then finally I think it only takes about 20 minutes to do it. Okay, so they get electronic, which is a French um, collaboration, uh, French MSU and uh, American collaboration. So I'm just, I steal this uh, animation from a get collaboration so that I can go through it quickly. So for the electronic from the spirit, so we go into the ASAC card. This is the ASIC um, ADC card or something like that. So each ASAC card contains four uh, ACAT chip. Each ACAT chip is 64 channels. So ASAC card is um, 256 channel, and then it will go in the COBOL concentrated board where the uh, data uh, uh, pass uh, and, and uh, manipulate. Then each COBOL board contains, um, uh, can take care of uh, four uh, ASAT card. Okay, so then you just keep going until you get enough for your thing. Then uh, all these go into a muton, okay? So I would, as I said, I would just go through quickly. And so uh, the bottom line is we need 12,000 12, channels. So we need 48 ASAP board, 12 Kobo card. And all this we have in our possession right now. The two muton is uh, still waiting because uh, we only have the, I think the prototype, not the actual mass production one. And the two micro TCA we have. Okay, yeah, so, okay, so I think that in um, uh, February 2015, we are able to put half of the electronics in there and then you can see that uh, we are able to detect cosmics. And here is, uh, we also have our software framework uh, set up so that we can uh, look at uh, uh, um, uh, Monte Carlo data. So these are the tracks of actual, um, uh, actual data, so not data, I mean actual particles. So this is, for example, photons from the strontium 90. And this is something we put it in, when we put our uh, detector into the uh, into the magnetic field. We see something like this, which we are able to track. Okay, so now let's go to one last point I want to make. Is this that um, we know? Uh, oh, well, actually, two last points. So I think I'll just skip this, and then we'll just say that we hope that we are planning on an experiment for 132 tin, 1314, and this one in the spring of 2016. Okay, and this is the. Uh, uh, first, a day one experiment with all the trigger array, and then uh, since we are working in a magnetic field, we cannot use PMTs. So one of the things that we are using is the MPPC, and we test them, and, and looks uh, uh, quite good. 
So now I would like to uh, mention a few things that there's a workshop on the science of his first TPC just about uh, uh, early this month. And in there, we, the, we have identif identified several areas. One of the areas is that maybe it's an opportunity for us also look into a low density region, which has been pioneered by Joe Nettowitz's uh, group, okay, to look at the uh, site of uh, 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 our process, okay. So you can, you can see in here that this is a simulation from URQMD. So in addition to PION, which is a really rare event, we should have a lot of uh, particles where we can study the uh, multi-fragmentation from there, we can extract uh, information about neutrino sphere. Okay, so finally, um, I would, yeah, so then there is this things, and finally I would like to, uh, just, just one more minute. So on this, uh, the magnetic field consideration, uh, there is a lot of advances have, have been done on the solenoid, but mainly to decrease it so that you can now purchase at reasonable price a portable solenoid. And then there's also advance in, instead of using wire, you can use jam and uh, that get electronic. So how portable is it? So for those who have been at MSU and know uh, the tight space in, uh, at the SA-100, we can actually fit in one of these solenoids so that we can have both the TPC and detect residues as well. I think with that, I will summarize. And I will say that we are having an exciting time. Though, so there were new results coming, including the uh, results from the spiritual collaborations. And, but this project can only succeed if it's an international uh, collaboration. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Betty. We have time for uh, questions on TPCs or facilities. Sydney. Betty, coming back to the physics, uh, I thought that this um, high energy nucleus nucleus collision uh, has proven that for density, the pions are not the best observable because they are strongly modified by interactions. Uh, um, so do you, can you comment on? Uh, yes, yeah, so sure. That's why I said that um, uh, theory still need to be worked on. So from the uh, transport model, um, uh, that uh, simulation that we did with uh, Powell and Yellowwood, that it shows that pion is much more sensitive than uh, uh, neutrons and protons. Uh, nucleons. Yeah, and of course, but yes. still, and they are still have a lot of final state interaction modified, right? Yes, yes, and we are starting early. So as a matter of fact, in that science, uh, with the TPC workshop, we have a discussion of what to do about pion, uh, pion um, production. And the there is a lot of progress in the pion production with the transport model in a parallel sessions also. Oh, I hope it's progress. It could be <laughs> just uh, meandering. But so we have time for one or two additional questions. Uh, this, this kind of studies relied very often on the systematics over the quite broad energy range, uh, different systems and so on. So what, what's your estimate of the necessary beam time per, per year at the FREAP or, or the, really to do the complete physics yeah, of, of, of this kind with these complicated devices? I, I agree with you, and I like to convince the PAC and whoever, uh, and th those in the audience in the PAC, I would really like uh, you guys to understand that this is not a structured experiment. You do one experiment, get one state, and then go home. In this case, as you can see, when we wrote, <laughs> we, when we, um, we, we have uh, laid out a, a, you know, a last uh, uh, a range of uh, uh, reactions that we would like to do. Exactly like we said, we need to do it because not only do we need to do the different energies to, uh, to, um, to understand the, how the transport model works and stuff. And so, uh, but you know, we have trouble, I think we have trouble convincing the pack. So maybe we're not doing as good as a job as we should. And so, and so we do have a program. And then the other thing is, is that precisely like what you said, we are also thinking that we should um, uh, also have a pion detection program at MSU where we, have, we are not in, at this energy, but we are at a lower energy, which also can provide uh, some input to the, to the, to the uh, transport models. Yeah. But it will be a good start uh, if we do the experiment um, next year, early next year, for two, two of the reactions. So maybe a last question. If not, I think it was very interesting talk, and uh, 
Uh, I think experiments, you need a facility, but you need a detection system. And yeah. to discuss new detection systems, this is a key issue. So it's very nice that you gave this talk. So thank you again. Thank you.